gonna start streaming, gonna start streaming, gonna start streaming Higurashi. Da 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 Higurashi. It might help if I load the game up and not make a silly fool of myself. Might help. Yeah, might help. If I do that right now. Set the game to the side. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, I have a perfect and now I've ruined it! There we go, that works. It's maybe slightly different, I suppose, than all the previous, previous shvams. Oh man, I really need to pin this to my taskbar. There we go, that's been pinned to my taskbar. Now, <laughs> now I don't have to go digging through my things to try and find freaking OVS. Hey there everybody! Welcome to another stream of Higurashi! Last night we ended on chapter 4! Now we're going into chapter 5! Hooray! You did watch the pitch, right? Yeah, okay. It's three college students who stole bikes. Okay. I knew we wouldn't be doing any club activities after school today before Mion even said anything. I had been invited over by Shion for an all-you-can-eat dessert. It's, I'm pretty sure an all-you-can- all-you-can- all I didn't do my warm-ups. <laughs> I made a point of leaving half my lunch and eaten. My expectations were only be rivaled by my hunger. Hey, Chikun. You seem kind of happy today. Did something good happen? Did it? I guess it was obvious. And I had questioned me with a happy look. That's right. Why don't I invite Rena for dessert as well? Now, if I recall correctly, Shion said something about having a ticket. At worst, the restaurant might be admission by ticket only today. If that was the case, then having Rena be turned away at the door would result in the worst feeling ever. Yeah, I got a little lucky. I'll tell you about it tomorrow. Rena, you'll definitely be jealous. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is it? What is it? I'm jealous. I'm jealous. This lucky thing. Is it cute? Is it? Cute? Hmm. I wonder what Rena would think of uniforms at Angel Mort. They'd definitely be a critical hit. Probably. It's probably pretty cute. Whoa! I'm jelly jelly! What is it? What is it? Red is best quality is her wiggles! <sighs> shit, shit, fuck, it's me on. Hmm. What kind of fortune were you blessed with? Huh? Could it be. You participated in the draw at Angel Mart about two months ago? And what? Hey now, I haven't even been transferred here two months ago. Oh, that's right. Then it's not the Angel Desserts Festa then. Mi-chan, what's the Angel Desserts Festival? Festa, exactly? You know, there's a family restaurant called Angel Mart right by Okiomiya Station. Every season they hold an event to promote their new dessert menu. That's today. Oh, it's no use going. The restaurant is reserved for people who won the draw. Mion explained once again what Shion explained to me last night. Rena will have to stop by the restaurant sometime. I'll do my best to draw a winning ticket and aim to enter the All You Can Eat event. <laughs> Knock yourself out. By the way, this is just something I heard, but there's a rumor that the tickets are being sold in the black market for a pretty penny. Hearing that story, I felt even more appreciative of the ticket that Shion had procured for me. I just thought that I was lucky to be able to eat dessert for free. But it turned out that that ticket was much more valuable. The number of things I had to thank Xion for had increased again. But thanks. I didn't know it was worth so much. I whispered in a voice only Mion could hear. That was how I conveyed my feelings. Mion looked at me for a moment before she tilted her head to the side and smiled confusingly. Hmm? What? Did you say something? It would be a problem if you said something to me right now. That smile seemed to be telling me as much. I guess Mion wouldn't be accepting any gratitude while she was Mion. I'll go to the restaurant. Today, I'll thank Mion while she's Xion. Well then, this old man will take his leave here. The work today is going to be a little rough. Later. Mion waved her hand energetically as she left. Hey, Cage-kun. Mion has been kind of weird lately. Like she's elated or something. Huh? What? You, you don't think so? Rena was pretty sharp when it came to these type of things. To me, Mion seemed the same as always, but Rena apparently felt something different. Oh no, it's been honest, Keiichi. You're just a fucking dumbass. You don't know, Keiichi? I totally thought you knew. Then her skirt fluttered as she spun around with a coy smile. You know what exactly? I was obviously wheezing my way out of the question, but I wasn't lying. Honestly, I didn't really know what was going on. 
Why did Shiona, persona of Mion that she had created, appear before me? Something was blatantly up, but Rena paid no heed. Oh, really? I wonder what it is, then. When Mi-chan is in a good mood, so is Rena. Saying that, she spread her arms wide and spun around happily. I didn't know why, but Rena was in a really good mood. It was so infectious that I had to smile, too. Even the chirping of the cicadas seemed joyful. Oh, it's such a happy... But you see... Rena abruptly stopped spinning. Her expression had returned to a more somber one. You see, Mi-chan, lately, she's been in a lot of pain. What do you mean? Pain. The pain that Rena was talking about probably wasn't physical. At first, she tried to pretend it wasn't a big deal. But like a wound, it began to fester, fester and grow. Eventually, she was no longer able to bear the pain and woke up in the middle of the night. Then she phoned Rena. Mi-chan was crying. I'm sorry, what are you talking about? What am I talking about, huh? What is Rena talking about? What? Hey, don't play dumb like that. Just now you said... I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Rena doesn't do anything. How? Rena spun as she laughed instantly. Evidently, she appeared to get sick, stumbling as she steadied herself with her hand against the wall. Oh, Rena's spinning. That was dumb. That's what you get for getting carried away and spinning like that. Sorry. Oh, I think I feel sick. Headlock! I led the dits of shoulder to lean on. To be stumbling around like a newborn fowl in this age is really quite a feat. Rena, in a good mood, only babbled incoherently after that. I laughed as I responded to and chided her. However, the chance to revisit that heavy topic Rena had brought up before never arrived. She's upset! Because you got feelings for Shion and not for me own, and she's mad! She's my old! As soon as I got home, I tossed aside my school bag and changed in a hurry. The effects of only having a light lunch were starting to show. My stomach began to let out fickle growls. Alright, let's go! Tango Mort! It's time to face the land of endless dessert! Preparations for battle are complete. Tally ho! <laughs> Angel Mort had a decidedly different feel to it compared to yesterday. Dessert for Fiesta Day, admittance by reservation only. Unless the front of the store was being swarmed by over a dozen young men. Judging by how they were looking upwards with jealousy instead of entering the store, they weren't invitees. Why would they gather here if they knew they couldn't get in? I found the answer when I passed through the crowd and began to climb the steps into the restaurant. Are, are you a participant? Do you have a ticket? Yeah, well, I was lucky. As soon as I said that, I was immediately mobbed. It was like being in the middle of a football scrum in a crowded train. What is going on? The reason was this. It wasn't just one ticket per person. One ticket could let up to four people inside. So it's like that, huh? Seems like I should have invited Rena and the others. Thanks for the tip. But I'll pretend I didn't hear that. With an uplifting, smi uplifting smile, I turned and ignored them. When I did, their arms all reached out at once, like the souls of the dead seeking succor. That ticket could have been up to four people. Bring us with you! What selfish people. This is the only reason they were crowded in front of the restaurant. Dozens of wretched arms reaching out for me like teeth of a giant rake and grasping at the air. I was already climbing the stairs to the entrance. What a heartless dick! Grab him! This isn't something to joke about. I flew up the rest of the stairs and threw myself inside the restaurant. It was like I had entered a different world. The miserable throng of the damned hurled curses at me from the other side of the glass door. But inside this completely soundproofed and air-conditioned restaurant, with the angelic smile of a waitress to welcome me, they were nothing more than a refreshing piece of scenery. I knew that I shouldn't laugh, but I again to let out a sinister cackle. Good afternoon! Welcome to Angel Mart. Due to today's dessert festa, the, des the restaurant is reserved for customers who won the draw. Could I ask for your name and ticket? Um, I don't have a ticket, but I should be on the guest list. Maibara. Maibara, Maribara. There it is. I'm sorry, but may I please have your full name? Keiichi. Keiichi Maibara. My apologies for the inconvenience. You're here by special invitation, right? I'll show you to your seat. Please, this way. The mood inside the restaurant re in the room was incredibly heated. Booths were packed to the brim. Men in their prime were stuffing their faces with dainty desserts that didn't suit them at all. It was a rather unnerving spectacle. Soon after I was shown to my sh my seat, she on arrived. Good afternoon. Welcome to Angel Mart. Hey, Shion. Thank you so much for today. I really appreciate it. You were a bit late, so I was getting worried. I'm really happy you came, though. It may have been because other customers were around her tone and were less casual, but she still capped off the welcome of her 
welcome with her usual bright smile. As you can see, there's lots of customers here today. I'm not sure I'll be able to take a break. Please take your time and relax until I'm finished. When I'm done, let's go play somewhere, okay? Whispering just that last part in my ear, Xion winked and returned to the kitchen. Maybe it was because the mood in the restaurant was so heated, but Xion seemed a bit bolder. Even a small change in her mannerism was enough to set my heart aflutter. Sorry to keep you waiting. While I was overwhelmed by the atmosphere inside the restaurant, orders from the new summer menu were carried out at one after another. Every single one was extravagantly huge. I get it. You can eat all of these amazing things for free. No wonder a chicken was worth its weight in gold. On top of that, all of it was plenty delicious. From dishes with general appeal to insane ones aimed for at a specific audience, there was absolutely no gap in their repertoire. Ribbits rare! No matter how you look at it, I don't think one eat person can eat this much. Well, let's just leave it at that for now. I didn't feel relaxing in here at all. All because the fe fervor inside the restaurant was clearly abnormal. All the other booths seated were crammed with groups of four. Sleazy men were gorging like pigs on cutely de decorated desserts, and it wouldn't have been a surprise if they started licking the plates. It was more than a little unsettling. It piqued my interest, so I started listening in on the conversation. And what things I heard! <laughs> Angel Lord, so boy. Me? I bought my ticket for 70000 on beep auctions. I told Zwerks that I was attending a relative's funeral. The uniforms here are the greatest. I wonder if the waitress would wipe it off me if I spilled some water in my pants right meow. Meow, meow. I heard that they're planning on selling like angel more figures. I'll have to pay head heat at the next w Wonder Festival. They, they sell used angel more uniforms on the fourth floor of the Beep and Akiba. But they are cost like 880000 It is an absurd price. Anmol cost 80000 while Borova closed down and going to the rate that theirs was was 12000 That's the price for used ones. Knockoffs are less than half of that. A knockoff from Beep is fine for me. I wonder if they'll start selling them. Then I'll put on my life-size figure I, I did buy off of Beep for several hundred thousand. If I can wake up every day to an angel from Angel, then I'll really get my gears going. The words spilling out of their mouths were pretty much all incomprehensible jargon. But they still keenly conveyed the hidden, that hidden behind them was an invisible order, aura of abnormality. Sorry to keep you waiting. The next dessert is the tropical cinnamon love affair. Is something the matter? Ah, uh, no. It's just, it's kind of different inside the restaurant today. Our restaurant is pretty famous in their circles. Well, we're aiming for that, so that it's all well and good. But during festas, there's something of the more hardcore crowd, so it can be a handful. The well, she just informed me quietly with a wry smile. The customers seemed rather riled up, almost like a pack of hyenas. Seems a lot of the customers today came for an unreasonably far away. Those type of people are fairly prone to lose their self-control, so it's a little scary. If you don't keep your guard up, something bad could happen. What does she mean by keep your guard up? At that moment, a loud crash resounded through the room. I turned around, startled, to see that a waitress had fallen down and spilled the order she was carrying on right onto a customer. Wait, isn't that she on? What have you done? The jeans I bought at a special specialty shop for a whole 880,000 yen are all sticky with frosting. <laughs> what the heck is that? For somebody who just met with disaster, he seems awfully happy. How tragic. It seems that little Miss Waitress will have to wipey wipey it up from the bottom of her heart. The conversation suddenly veered off in an odd direction. Hey, hey, what did he say? Wipey what? Did he want Sean to wipe him down? Right over that obviously apparent tent he had pitched over his crotch. Oh, but that is... I... Why be, 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 The wipey, wipey chant quickly spread throughout the room. Totally cornered, Xion went pale. She looked over to a more experienced waitress to help, but was only met with a head shaking out of pity. So Nozaki's son was stripped. Customers who do that to purposely get their clothes dirty have been on the ride lately. Ah, uh, so you're saying she was tripped. Then what happened just now wasn't an accident. It was on purpose? The regular girls are careful about it, so they definitely won't end up like that, but sonozaki san is only a seasonal hire, so she had her guard down. Customers today can be could easily pick on her on that, so she's been targeted since this morning. What's the manager doing? He should just kick those thugs out! We're in the service industry, so that's not much we can do about it. She laughed as she said that in a resigned tone. 
She untrembled uncontrollably with a dishcloth in hand as she turned bright red. The men who had been doused in frosting splayed over on the on the bench, putting the cream-covered tent over its crotch on full display. Still months of unprepared, her trembling hand and sword goaded on by onlookers. Come, come, come! It's time for the wipey wipey! From my male point of view, it might have been a ridiculous spectacle that I could just smile wryly at, but from a woman's point of view, this is obviously pure humiliation. When I was trapped by those thugs and had been paralyzed with fear, Shion fearlessly stood up, for, up to them and saved me. Still as humiliating as it was, Shion was also partially to blame for this. But it wasn't as though her life was at stake, right? Even these guys. They were just going to jeer at her with a bit of a lewd situation. It's not like they were going to eat Shion alive or anything. It'd be alright if I just consider, consoled her afterwards. Even I was scared. But Kei Chan was in trouble, so I had to be brave and do my best. When I, a man, was being assailed by three thugs while paralyzed with fear, Shion shaved me without a second thought. What about now? These sleazy, filthy degenerates were trying to pin the blame on Shion. This time our roles were reversed. Hey, Kei Chimarebara, if you don't save her now, then will you be able to repay the debt you owe? You scared by Kei Chimarebara? At that time, Shion, no, Mion didn't even show a hint of hesitation. Then what about now? Not hesitating. Then what? If you're not hesitating, then what you're helping? Why aren't you helping her? Now resign yourself to your fate. <laughs> Shut up, you greasy fat ass! Get out of here before I get angry! I grabbed Shion's shoulder firmly and pulled her behind me. <laughs> Seems you don't understand. Yonder waitress was the one who wet my pants. This is who punishment. The one who needs punishing is you. Enough with the empty words. If you're a man, talk with your fists! Ooh. My body was lifted into the air like nothing. I was thrown right back into my own seat. This guy is strong? No matter how you look at it, athletic and this lardo just aren't in the same area code. <laughs> Many otaku are unexpectedly well versed in some obscure martial art. Don't be misunderstanding us. Hey yo! What up, Mayora? The man smirked, showing off his gum line. Okay, Chan, are you okay? Damn it, how lame must I look right now? You were tripped, weren't you, Shion? They're the ones in the wrong here, so don't let them take advantage of you. That may be, but it was still my fault. Whoa! One more time! Let's do it! Nice. Snap, crud, fush. Don't go thinking this is enough to make me give up. One more time! Yeah, no, I saw that on Twitter earlier. Hoo hoo hoo, you're all duck. I'm not done yet! Rise, my will to fight! Hoo not just running, I have planted every single one of my steps firmly as I close the distance to the lard ball. Every time I ripped my foot off the floor, I could feel my burning spirit flare up from the point of impact. Everything slowed down like I was walking underwater. As I stepped forward in that viscous flow of time, I calmly measured the gap between us. With our difference in height, reach was my ultimate advantage. There was an ever so tiny distance between us when my, where only my punch would be able to reach. I unleashed my iron fist of righteous anger, but it flew towards his face slowly like I punched underwater. Reacting to that, with a smirk on his face, this, the fat so easily slipped under inside of my punch. I hadn't realized it until now, but in this mired time, I was able to observe his baffling counterattack with almost painful clarity. His arm slowly swung around in a large windmill motion, wrapped around my whiffed punch, and descended into an arc. That arm swung down in the arms of a clock and came into contact with my head, twisting my upper body around. Dragging my head along, he followed through with another rotation. This time he rotated his entire body like a top, followed by another rotation. Combining defense and offense, it was a brilliant counter. That's right, three times. I was thrown after three rotations, I think. In this viscous region of time, I was unable to struggle, so I could only wait dumbstruck until the moment I was thrown. The moment I was, the sluggish temporal anomaly, anomaly abruptly ended. I'm pretty excited for it, too. I kind of want to play it. I have intrigue. Crash! You lack training, young man. I was low to admit it, but against somebody trained in martial arts, I couldn't win with, that, with force of will alone. After my consciousness faded in a wave of dizziness, when I came to, I was lying down in my own seat. Thankfully, you weren't injured. 
more experienced waitress from before wiped the sweat from my brow with a towel. While she was doing that, a red-faced and teary-eyed Shion trudged over. Are you okay? Doing that all for my sake? I'm sorry. Sorry, too. I wasn't much help. I've never won a fight before. No, you're just trying to make me happy. I'm not joking. It's just that I was thinking that it was lucky Kei-chan came in here today. When she said that, she stuck her tongue out teasingly. She wiped off the whipped cream from the washcloth she was holding in her hands. Sonosaki-san, you can take your break now. You still have one or two hours left, don't you? Ah, uh, no, it's fine. Even though it's just part-time, it's still a paying job. I want to work properly while I'm on the clock. So really, you don't have to worry about me. She couldn't even put up a brave front. I couldn't... I would never even think for a second that Mion could be that weak. This was Shion. She had been harassed by some unreasonable riffraff. That was reality. Okay, chan don't mind me. Please eat as much dessert as you can. When you're done, we'll have, your f have you fill out a survey. Well then, I've got to get back to the floor. After some consoling words and a sympathetic smile to Shion, the other waitress started to head back to work. That's where I stopped her. Excuse me, could I borrow your phone? The phone? It's by the register. I'll show you where. Huh, call for help! Hmm. Well, I mean... Yeah, that's true. It could give me ideas. But, uh, keys to Keys isn't gonna be a rhythm game, it's a visual novel! I pulled a 10 yen coin from my wallet. This wasn't about saving face. My being a worthless coward was an unchangeable fact, but I could just cry myself to sleep about that later tonight. Now it was not the time for tears. I had to fight! If I recall, one ticket is good up to four people, right? Is it right if I call over three more people? Yes, that's fine. For the time being, I'll write them down as the guest list. Could I have their names? I turned around and glared at the greasy hooligan who had subject Xion to humiliation. There are three things that aren't working in your favor today, punk. The first is that I owe Xion. The second is that I'm a man who's not afraid away his pride to win. And the third is that we're the most powerful club members in history! Please add Renevi Yugu, Satoko Hojo, and Rika Furere to the guest list. Understand? I'll do that. I'll have the best and most powerful club members join the fray. They can bring down a thousand foes. You fat asses! Prepare to meet your omega! -er. This is a nice restaurant, huh? Oh, the uniforms are cute! And I want to wear them too! Oh. On top of that, they're being treated, we're being treated with dessert. I'm deeply moved. Yeah, eat as much as you like. Don't worry about my share. Okay, it's son, enough with the charades. Let's get to the point. Ren and Rika put down their forks when Slotico broached the subject. After looking at them for a few moments, I pressed my forehead firmly to, into the table. I beg of you. I don't care if you make fun of how pathetic I am. Please, lend me your strength. The three of them seemed surprised by the sudden turn of events, but nonetheless listened to what I had to say without making fun of my unusual behavior. <laughs> because it is. What's the matter? Something happened, didn't it? Didn't it? Actually, Mion's younger sister, Shion, is working part-time at this restaurant. Ah, oh, the little sister you were talking about, right? Could it be her? Could it? She resembles her, resembles her. Resemble? That's just Mion with her hair down, isn't it? Er, I didn't know what to say. If Keiichi says it's that Shion, then that's Shion. That might be twins, but can they really look that much alike? Sadako? They're sisters. <laughs> They're called monozygotic twins. They really can look identical. And I gave the most plausible explanation, so everybody else is convinced. Well then, do you believe me? I'll get to the point then. I recounted everything that had just happened. How Shion was targeted, and how she was antagonized by the customers, and the humiliation that was forced upon her. Also, how incredibly pathetic I was. I included everything without trying to hide it. That's awful, poor Shichan. However, for you to be unable to help her, there should be a limit to how unsightly you can be. There's nothing I can say to that. Sethical Chan, to admit that you lost and to seek help is very difficult to do. Keichikun chose to help Shichan rather than save his pride. Hmm, so pathetic. Then his follow-up stung a bit, but I could only be thankful that she understood. Sadako was calling me all manners of names, but there was no malign intentions behind her words. Then, what should we do? Her voice was monotone, but there was a hint of resolve in her, in her words. 
I replied to Rika's suggestive silence and kind of with my own quiet resolve. Well, I thought it'd be something like that. It is a bit much for Kei-san to handle alone. Huh? Then you'll help. Of course, Kei-chikun. I'll help anyone who's being bullied. I remember when I encountered those thugs. What Shion had said about the strong feeling of solidarity in Hinamizawa really began to hit home. Ever Keiichi Marebara? <laughs> I'm glad she does! <laughs> Oh, now is not the time to get choked up with tears of gratitude. Now is the time to fight! Yes! That's why I said that. Because I even show, I even sent you the video, hun. Sorry, I owe you one. You tried your best, but didn't stand a chance alone. How sad, how sad. Yuki Chan gently met him, my, pat, me on, my, pat my head. There was no mindless pity in the palm of that hand. It was overflowing with a strong, dependable feeling of lead the rest to us. Mion can't join us due to various circumstances, so I'm ter temporarily be taking command. Our strategy will revolve around Xion's defense and the except extermination of the enemy's combat capabilities. Who's the enemy? Are there a lot of them? From this point of forward, anybody who messes with Xion will be considered an enemy combatant. There are no rules of engagement. Compensation will be the dessert you just ate. Any questions? As, as a waitress, I feel this. Everybody had already entered club mode. Their eyes peered at the riffraff clamoring around inside the restaurant like predators stalking their prey from the darkness. Rika-chan held up her hand. What is it, Rika-chan? Do we have to show mercy? Of course we don't have to! We have no need to show mercy to the rabble who would dare lay hands on Mion's little sister. Then it is okay, Keiichi? Rika-chan was serious. She was really ready to pretty much murder someone. Huh? I'm counting on you, Rika-chan! I, Keiichi Marabara, shall assume all responsibility. Route them! <laughs> Alrighty! Meta's going to do her best too! Sorry, please do. Kate, son, you don't have to be so tense. Well, just wait and see. By the time you finish that parfait, we'll finish cleaning up too. Well then, everyone, let's give it our all. Go for it! Yay! Yay! That's the most powerful war band the world had ever known. Trained by Mion, began to move. I was the oldest, the only boy, and behaved like a leader. But when you consider our club activities, I was by far the most junior member. Individually, everyone beside me had terrifying combat capabilities. If all of them combined their strengths to protect Shion, I couldn't even imagine. I was probably about to witness something terrible and awe-inspiring. Sonazaki-san! Five deluxe parfaits to table seven! Ah, oh, sure thing! Xion carried the order to the tables. For Xion to carry all five parfaits without wobbling took so much effort she didn't have the breathing room to pay attention to her feet. <laughs> Comrades, here she comes yet again. This time I'll have her spill everything on my pants and have her wipey wipey right down to my underwear. It was the same wipey wipey scheme that had occurred just a short time earlier. This time, another one of them was trying to out for himself. The very depravity of these men in itself was a full out attack. Rena? This Keiichi ambushed them around the tables five and six. Rena, do you copy? The restaurant uniform's so cute! Oh, I want to take them home! She on her bottom swaying while carrying the parfaits and being chased by an equally swaying Rena. She was supposed to be escorting Xion, but Rena was instead transfixed by the back of her uniform. For a normal person's point of view, it was probably like having a fox guard a hen house. But when it comes to Rena, things are different. Cute mode, 120 synchronization. We won. When Ren is in that state, even the laws of physics don't apply. Xion's legs, unsteady and defenseless, were being targeted by the sleazebags. Now, my comrades! Hail mine Fiora, shining Lucifer, the Harumi Kameka! A leg snaked out to trip Xion's defenseless feet. He gads three of them at once! Thwap, thwap, thwap. Gah! Oop! Oh! It happened in an instant. The three fools writhed in pain as their legs bent at unnatural angles. Oh! What is this madness? Renner teetered into view and gave them a warning. Oh, no mischief, okay? No me, no, no! Renner's going to be the one to take her home! This girl, what's with that strange technique? The humans come, clutched at their bruised ankles as they passed out. That's our Renaissance. No matter how many times I see it, it's always frighteningly quick. 
Yeah, it's an unbreakable barrier. Anyone within a two meter radius who attacks Xion is completely obliterated by Rena. As Xion is making her rounds through the restaurant, there were people here and there collapsing with welts on their legs or hands. God damn it, Rena! <laughs> Rena, this is Keiichi. Good work. Please continue the mission. Also, permission to take home denied. Repeat, permission to take home denied. Rena, just the catch of circle. I guess just looking is fine. That wouldn't prevent her from guarding Shion, so I guess it's okay. Anyways, thanks to this, I know who tried to mess with Shion. Anybody who was clutching their arm or leg while they were writhing in agony were basically branded by their bruises. Currently, we have finished identifying all enemy forces. Proceeding to the next phase. Satoko, this is Keiichi. What's your status? This is Satoko. There's a rude way to ask. That's a rude way to ask. Keiichi son, exactly who do you think I am? Satoko was in the kitchen. She had spread open a sketch of the restaurant on the counter, replete with open crits, op with order chits and their destinations, and ha now sorting through the freshly made desserts. Hey, what are you doing? Now, now, Sonozaki-san, it's all right, just leave it to her. More importantly, we're taking all these orders out at once. I'm counting on you. The veteran waitress was briskly directing her juniors as the trays went out one after another. All the desserts that had passed through Sadako's hands were delivered at once. How? Oh, lots of cute desserts are coming. How? Oh. I think you know this, but don't touch them. At least, if you still value your life. I know, but how? Oh. Certainly, they're all incredibly cute-looking desserts. They're all works of art that you could enjoy before even taking your first bite. However, since Sadako had meddled with them, there was nothing more than an unpredictable danger. Blissfully ignorant of that fact were the men now stuffing their faces. Ugh. This is... Oh. Almost right away, they realized that something was wrong. Sadako, what did you mix in there? It couldn't have been salty Tabasco, right? My, what are you saying, Cage son You said no mercy. I might not look it, but when I get down to business, I like to be very thorough. As she said that, she twirled a dubious file from her fingers while, before putting it away smartly in her pouch. We get this, Asadiko. The customers are moving. Escort duty is all yours. Leave it to me. I'm trying to think, but I didn't see Rikachan anywhere. Where could she be lurking? Clatter, clatter. Several men stood up suddenly from their seats, surveying the restaurant for something. The rest was fidgeting. And that look of relief when they found the single pile card hanging from the placard hanging from the ceiling. Written on the placard was the word restroom. They began a mad rush in that direction. It wasn't just one or two people. All the people who were banded as the enemy were standing up in their seats while clutching at their stomachs. Oh, I think I was a little too greedy. Where's the washroom? Me too. Not a number one, but a number two. I need to cash out, Mew. Where's the toilet I found yet? You're in for it now. I felt dirty just thinking about what Sadako probably did to their desserts. The problem was how to follow this how to follow this up. I was intrigued, so I followed the restroom men to the washroom. The narrow hallway connecting to the restroom was cramped with about ten men. What is this? As I peered over to see what was happening, whoa. Seeing that the toilet was clogged and black blowing, unleashing a loud gurgling sound and a terrible stench. There was no way to use it in this state. Damn that Sadako, what a frightening display of power. No, this wasn't Sadako's doing. It was divine punishment. Yeah, they were just unlucky. I'll just apologize when ask the one of the employees here to clean it up. Can't do my business like this! Ah, why do we meow, do meow, cameras? It's a brilliant combination of traps, but it would be better if there was only one push to the kicker. Seeing as it was Sadako, she wouldn't have overlooked that. Now that it's coming, it's this time for the last resort! Faced with a moral dilemma, the men, that man only had one other option. The women's restroom. Is it using the girls' room going to get us in trouble? I'm pretty sure there's no female customers today. Why didn't I think of that before? <laughs> Women's toilets are the best. What a brazen bunch they are! The men's sweat now pouring from their brows made a mad rush to the girls' room without hesitation. Only to be met with Rika. Me? Ah! There was a girl there. It was Rikisha. The men stood there, frozen in various complicated poses indicating their surprise. Rika Chen also seemed dumbfounded by the sudden turn of events, but the look on her face was strangely perfect. This was all part of the plan as well. You sly dog, Rika Chen. I should never underestimate you. This is, you see, Mademoiselle. Me. 
the men's room is a bit dangerous at the moment, so we want to borrow the toilet here right now. Meow, meow. Me. But, but I guess it's not right after all. Right, my comrades! Despite having a girl stand there in the restroom, I never knew it could put on such an overwhelming barrier. There was no way anyone would be brave enough to lift Rika-chan out of the way to try and do their business. Hmm. That was the most they could do after all. If it was a man in a full club mode, for example, someone like me, they'd plow right through Rika-chan without a second thought. Now, what are you going to do, you fat asses? The price for tormenting Xion still hasn't been paid. If you're in trouble, I can help you. If you're in trouble, I can help you. That would be much appreciated. How would you do that? I can use one of the toilets outside. I'll show you to them. That would be perfect. Freeze, freeze. At this rate, it'll end up being group anima free. Rika Shine, with a pleasant smile on her face, guided them with a casual stride in her step. At this race against time, her slow pace was sadistic torture. Mademoiselle, is this toilet far from here? We'll get there soon. Obeying Rika Chan's directions, they are about to leave the restaurant. Cage, you can finish it. Give them hell. Yeah, leave it to me. I spread my arms out and blocked them as they tried to leave the restaurant. What is the meaning of this? We are Defcon 1 here! Listen up, you tubs of lard. You know what happens if you even set one foot out the store, right? What's the meaning of the pre preposterous stage means? Ah, look, it's written here on the ticket! Not valid for Rianchi, see? You're free to use any toilet you want, but the moment you step outside that door, you can't come back. Boom! You remember this! I don't want to guide anybody who says scary things like that. Everybody panicked as Rikachev began to turn back. They could only fugit figuratively and literally fall in line. All the waitresses also lined up to see them off. Thank you very much for coming! We shall return! Clang, clang. The bell rang playfully as the door shut behind them. How pathetic! Too easy! <laughs> we did it! Yay! Ren and Sadako clapped their hands together. Whew. I couldn't handle hold a handle of those guys by myself, but when we get the group together, we can send them packing like a herd of cattle. With opponents this week, any of us could take them on by ourselves. Kate son, you need to up your game. I was low to a minute, but Sadako was right. Damn it! One day I'll be strong enough to be worthy to stand alongside them. But I'm really glad you were able to protect Mi Chan. I'm glad you were able to protect Mi Chan's little sister. Now there's none of those bad people who are playing planks left. You're blessed to have such wonderful friends, Sonazaki san. The veteran waitress was also smiling. After the hard herd was sent packing, it had calmed down completely inside the restaurant. Xion was flustered and she glanced between us and the now empty seats. You, you did that for me? I, I mean... Xion's expression was somewhere between happy and guilt-ridden, and her face turned slightly red as she ran into the kitchen. Oh, Xi Chan is cute! They really are twins! Aww! Given Xion's personality, there was no way she'd thank us directly. We might have to be a bit excessive in our means, but I'm really glad that we were able to save her. I think you know this already, but Sonosaki-san is very grateful. As a representative of the floor staff here, I'm also extending my gratitude. The applause quickly spread throughout the entire restaurant. Not only the other waitresses, but also the customers who were generally there to enjoy the desserts. Everyone was lauding our efforts. She put fucking laxatives in their fucking food! Fucking Satsuko has no goddamn chill. When he had mostly finished eating and were filling out the survey, Rika Chan made her return. Oh, good work! Did everything go all right? You took a while. I'm sorry. I got lost on the way back. It was a lot of trouble. <laughs> Rika Chan likes to stray down some pretty strange roads, so she gets lost pretty often. But she gets lost just guiding people to a nearby toilet. Everybody has their strengths and weaknesses. It has a lot of strong points that are more than make up for that. I can see that. That expression in the girls' room. You're quite the th thespian. Keiichi was being horrible. He was thinking if I were in their shoes, I would have run over and rushed into the washroom. What? Did, did what I was thinking show up on my face again? Keiichi was a pervert. No, I mean... <laughs> no, I'm just reading. If I have to go, I'll go. I could laugh about it then, but a few days later, a newspaper headline, headline read, Ten identified men were taken into custody in Hideyama. The men claimed they were traveled with, from Sisphone City by foot to find a toilet, but the spot they were taken to was cust into custody was about beep, wait, kilometers away from Sisphone. 
When I read that article, I realized how terrifying Rika-chan really was. Well, thanks for treating me. I'm happy that you called me here today. Oh, are you going home already? You can stay a little longer. I was in the middle of organizing some drawers. If I leave it like that, I won't be able to pull out the put out the futon. Ah, uh, I guess that's true. Oops, looks like I called her at a bad time. Yeah, when Rena phoned her, she was in the middle of cleaning her room, but she still came. Well, it was an emergency, so it couldn't be helped. Besides that, I got to eat a lot of sweets, so I'm very happy. Thanks for today. Sorry for calling you out suddenly. Tell Sheila and I said bye. I'll be taking my leave then. rena -san, please take your time. Yeah, I will. Later! Rika and Satoko, in a good mood, horsed around with each other as they left. Yee, we saved Shion by giving those fucking assholes fucking laxatives. That's like one of the major things I'm always afraid of when, like, wanting to work fuck work made cafes is that, like, some asshole's going to do that. I'm always terrified of that kind of thing. When Rena and I were having a discussion about the desserts we just ate, Shion arrived with some coffee. Fuck! Oh! Um, did the two little ones leave already? Hearing them call little ones was so strange, I inadvertently burst out laughing. <laughs> Apparently they were in the middle of cleaning, so they went home. Shion had brought enough coffee for four people. I heard from my senior. Seems that you went through a lot of trouble for my sake. It was no trouble at all. None other than Shichan was in a pinch after all. Oh, was it alright if I call you Shichan? It messes with Michan, so I thought I would be cute. Oh, uh, well, whatever you want. Shion seemed a bit hesitant when Shion when Rena started talking to her. Rena is pretty sharp about some things, so Shion was probably worried that Rena would find out that Mion uh, it was Mion after talking like this. Shion said she'd work soon. She'd have work soon and hurried off back to the kitchen, leaving behind coffee just for the two of us. She was a bit upset with Rena. Maybe she thought I was too friendly. Oh. She's just embarrassed. Still, they really do look the same. Instead of twins, they look like... It's like another Michan. They look the same, but the atmosphere around them, or rather their insides, are completely different. I think those types of twins are pretty interesting, though. You think that, Keichika? I think they're identical on the inside, too. It somehow became silent. And I was just staring at the pattern of milk made on the surface of her coffee without a, saying a word. For somebody like me, who could never stop talking, it was a rather uncomfortable moment. Menon's off-put mannerisms seemed to imply I said something I shouldn't have. That unpleasantness carried on for a little while. Rena, you said it today, right? That Mion was hurting. Did I say something like that? Don't play dumb with me. You definitely said it. On the way home from school. Rena answered by laughing while continuing to play dumb, questioning if she, if she said that. Sick headed as I was, I had a faint realization. Rena wanted to say that I was the one who hurt Mion. But when? Me? Hypothetically, if something like that happened, it's not something I did out of malice. I continued the conversation, but let off the assumption that I had hurt me on. Yeah, I think that's true. I don't think Keiji Kun had any bad intentions. Rena replied, also leaving out the assumption that I had hurt me on, but that confirmed it. I don't know how it happened, but it seemed that I had hurt me on, and Rena was upset with me due to the fact that I hadn't realized it. I don't want you to misunderstand, but it's not like Rena. I don't want you to misunderstand. It's not like Rena is mad at you. Seeing right through what I was thinking, Rena said that as she smiled even more gently than usual. It's just that, how do I say this? It's hard. If I made a mistake, please say so clearly. I'm so sick headed I disgust even myself. If there's something I should apologize for, then I'd want to know even a little quicker so I can make up for it. I don't think that Kei Chikun made a mistake. Depending on how you look at it, Michan might be the one who's being unfair. Taking the stance that the girl was the one being unfair might be unfair in itself. What Rena said was draped in mystery. Unfortunately, I had no idea what she meant. The only thing I got out of it was... was that I had said or done something to inadvertently hurt Mion. I'm begging you, Rena. Mion's one of my best friends. I don't want to leave something between us that could cause problems later on. So tell me, how did I hurt her? I can't tell you. You need to realize something like this for yourself. And I was smiling like she always did, but spoke bluntly. The fact that she had this strength of will surprised me for a moment. I'm asking you because I can't figure it out, you know? My tone had un unintentionally become harsh. And I was also surprised for a moment, but quickly returned to her flat demeanor. Well then, 
I guess just a hint is fine. This is special, okay? Sorry, please. I'll think about this seriously. Then I looked around the restaurant searching for Shion. Shion was working enthusiastically, but without confidence, as usual. Shion, if she ties her other up, it's almost impossible to tell apart from Michan, right? Yeah, that's true. So then, so if Michan lets down her hair, would she be impossible to tell apart from Shichan? Probably. But what does that have to do with anything? What if? What if her being the younger twin was a lie? And that she was just Michan pretending to be her sister? What would you think? And it was sharper than her daily behavior bellied. Belayed. I was hesitant in verbally affirming that, but it was the right answer. It might be unfair to answer a question with another question. But if, like you say, Mion is just pretending to be Shion, what purpose would that serve? For maintaining the silence for a while, and I glanced at the clock. That's what I want you to think about. Maybe too much of a hint. Oh. To thank me for the dessert, Mena stood up from her seat. Sorry, I was asked to buy a few things, so it's about time I left. It's okay for you if you tell Shion I'm sorry. It's okay for you to tell Shion I'm sorry I didn't say goodbye? Yeah, I'll tell her. Sorry. Huh? That Rena is so short tempered. Sorry for getting angry. Keiji Kun is the one at fault here. Rena was harsh in her apology, but I was the one who really should have apologized. I think to me, Chan, it's something that doesn't bother her much anymore. So if you want to forget the whole thing happened, that's fine too. But you see, as a girl, I hope that Keiji Kun realizes it by himself and comes to apologize of his own volition. Hello! So in the queue mode only at the end, she disappeared in the direction of the register. While I was staring into space, somebody suddenly tapped me on the shoulder. Sorry to keep you waiting. <laughs> I'm finally done. It was Shion who had changed into her street clothes. She flashed a smile while greeting me. Thank you so much for today. Everything was delicious. You were all really happy with it. Oh no, don't mention it. But I'm glad everyone had fun. Huh? That girl that was just here left as well? She had some shopping to do. She said she was sorry for leaving without saying anything. I see. Well then, should we leave as well? Even though I'm off duty, I'm still nervous about the workplace. We ended up strolling around without any destination in particular. I had been sitting the entire time, so I in need of a fresh so I was in need of fresh air. When we left the sky had already draped in a veil of darkness. Ah <sighs> it's gotten dark already. Even though I promised I'd be finished early. Shion seemed upset that there wasn't much time left. Oh well. At least you got a little time to chat like this. Saying that, Xion set out for the tree-lined boulevard behind the station. The front of the station was slowly becoming crowded with businessmen heading home. Well then, I guess I should start with an introduction. I was mistaken for my sister when we first met, so we never got to properly introduce ourselves. You can only smile and laugh royally. My name is Xion Sonozaki. I am only similar to my sister in appearance. My sister is rough around the edges and hot-headed, but I'm composed and methodical person. I remember what Rena and I had been talking about earlier. I said that they looked the same, but their personalities were different. But Rena said that they were both the same. I don't know what tipped her off, but Rena figured out that Shion was Mion. Also related to that, she said that I had hurt Mion. Then I had given me one hint. That was why Mion is pretending to be Shion? Shion, what did you hear from, about me from Mion? My sister seems to have taken a liking to you. She talks about you quite a bit. Like about club activities, getting pranked and pranking you back, boyish kind of stories. You really do get along. Boyish kind of stories, huh? I'm gonna think, but I think there was something Xion told me before. Okay, Chan, you can't, don't think of my sister as a girl, do you? What's that? Was that... What happened to hurt Mion? Mion herself said she wished she had been born a boy, and that being born a girl didn't suit her. Said a lot of things to that effect, didn't she? Okay, Chan. You look like you're having fun. Huh? Ah, no, that's not true. <laughs> Even though you're bad at hiding things, you sure like to lie, don't you? Still, I don't hate you for it. Saying that, she lightly chopped my forehead. Even though Shion was enjoying herself, I was still trying to figure out how I hurt Mion. I was having a hard time figuring out the riddle that Rena had left, left me with. You even mad at the... Keiji! It's because you don't see her as a girl! You need to see her as what she is! Hey, see that? Don't you think it's pretty? You think even a guy would find it pretty? Mm, yeah, it's pretty. 
she and I was having fun, window shopping, dragging me at all sorts of stores I would never, normally never enter. It wasn't like she was begging me to buy or anything, and I wasn't getting bored either. It was just something to talk about as we walked around. In an easy-going way, we browsed through numerous stores. We discussed all sorts of topics I knew nothing about, but I didn't lose interest. I had the feeling she was good at conversation. Okay, you have a good night. Okay, Chan, is your first time doing this kind of thing? Yeah, it is. If someone didn't bring me to these accessory shops, I don't think I'd ever set foot one in my entire life. Not that. I meant more like this. What? I leapt back when Xion suddenly linked her arm with mine. Hey! You were the act so surprised! It's not so embarrassing to link arms with a girl, is it? Xion's expression was a little more, bit miffed, but suggestive at the same time. I thought... So, um, I'm not that embarrassed. If you want some arms, I can spare one or two. Here! <laughs> okay, Tan, you really know how to entertain someone. I see why my sister took a liking to you. If you don't want my arm, I'm taking it back. <laughs> God, come on! I'm happy to have it! Laughing in good spirits, she unlocked her arm with mine. My heart skipped a beat. This question might be a bit mean, but I want you to, I want to enjoy seeing your reaction. Okay, Tan. Have you been ever arm in arm with a girl before? I ran a bonfire at a field trip doesn't count, by the way. That little devil. She was asking that question knowing full well what the answer would be. Well, field trips are out. This is rough. Hehe. <laughs> I thought as much. That impish laugh, it really is the same as Mion's. You really are Shion, right? You're not just Mion saying you're Shion, are you? Are you thinking that my sister might pretend to be me? I thought you were twins until just now, but that way you messed around is just like Mion. You're just saying that. You can tell us apart easily. What do you mean by that? If my sister was holding your arm like this, would you get nervous? I would. I'd be completely on edge worrying about what you would do for an, ar for an arm lock. <laughs> she unlaughed so hard she had to hold onto her sides. Hey, hey, is it really that funny? You're cheering up! <laughs> no, no, it's just... I was just thinking about how hopeless my sister is. She isn't even able to get a young man hot and bothered while she's arm in arm with him. She really is a failure as a woman. <gasps> Shion has rude. I remember once again that I heard someone say that before. Sometimes I think that my sister would have been better off if she'd been born a boy. If she did, I might have fallen for her. Just kidding. <laughs> Yon did say something about wanting to be born a boy. My sister is on the fence on whether she wants to be a boy or a girl. Well, it's the price she pays for living an awkward lifestyle. Just leave her be. You've been saying some pretty harsh things about your sister right now. Mion has some soft parts to her that I don't like. The way that Xion talks somehow sounded cold. Xion, do you not get along with Mion? Well, we get along well enough. Still, there's a few things which I can't forgive her, as her sister. Hey, look at that! Don't you think it's cute? I turned around to look where Xion was pointing. What was there was the familiar window of a toy store shop. The same shop that states the incident that occurred during last during last Sunday's club activities. What Shion was pointing out was a display with a plethora of adorable dolls that looked like the sort girls would like. I wonder why girls like these kinds of things. It's because they're cute. Don't you think they're cute, Kei-chan? I'm a man, so I don't really get that vibe. Now, now, which one do you think is the cutest out of all of them, Kei-chan? Shion, pulling on my arm, motioned to the row of dolls. They were all lined up like they were close sisters, taking a commemorative photo. A few of them seemed strangely familiar. I've seen the, those four, four over there somewhere. Oh, I guess they really are famous. If even you know about them. Sean sounded impressed. These are the new dolls that were just brought in from England. They still have some available here, but around the cities they're trouble keeping them on the shelves. Even though they're supposed to be inexpensive, it seems they're starting to come at a premium. Guess girls still like those kinds of things even as they grow up. It depends on the person, but I think that girls who don't like dolls and stuffed animals are pretty few and far between. Even my tomboy of a sister said that these are were adorable. Oh. Even Mion said they're adorable. That is pretty amazing. That's right, I just remembered. The store owner gave this one to us after Sunday's event. Except for Mion, who was a relative and everybody had gotten something. I really do think that one's the best. That Philly dress really gives it something. That's it. That's the one the shop owner gave to me. So it seems, Shion replied softly but clearly. Uncle Yoshiro gave those out as, as thanks for helping liven things up on Sunday's event. It seems she gave them to the four friends my sister brought along. So you got the doll with the dress then? 
What did you think? It was really cute, right? As a man, there's no way I'd think it was cute. So what did you do with the doll? I wasn't really going to do anything with it. So I gave it to someone. To who? She unlaughed. I could hear an audible click run through my head. Like the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle snapping into place. Thank you very much for today, everyone. You made the event turn out great. It's not that much. It's not much, but here's something extra for today. Ah, young Uncle Yoshiro. Isn't that a little something for me, too? My, my, my. Quite an adorable one, isn't that? When Sadako and Yukashan opened the bag, there were cute stuffed animals inside. Wow, they're all so cute. Can I take them home? I really can. Which means there's something for me, too. Whoa, I got a pretty adorable one. With a stuffed toy wearing a beautiful dress. One you'd use to play house. Rana's eyes were glued to my stuffed doll. Sadako were the same, and Riku-chan too. I see. It wasn't just Rana, Sadako, and Riku-chan. There was one other person who seemed jealous. <laughs> Kei-chan got the one that fits in the least. Not wanting for her expression to give it away. She had said that to hide her embarrassment. Well, I guess it's cute and pretty. I can admit it's adorable, but a doll with changeable clothes is... Eh. If you walked around with it, then you'd be treated like a weirdo starting tomorrow. Definitely. Mian's usual teasing way of talking. I looked around to see who I sh would give the doll to. Mian was right in front of me. Mian was the only one who hadn't received a present, so I thought about giving it to her. But I didn't. Huh? You're giving it to me? Serena? Thank you! Turning away from Mion's covertous gaze, I gave the doll to Rena. Mion's smile bore into my back. There was no way I couldn't have noticed. Why did I get didn't I not give it to Mion? Since Mion was the only one who didn't get anything, wouldn't it have just been standard practice to give it to her? At that time I had noticed something was wrong. That's why I said it. Just protecting myself. If I didn't give it to Rena, then walking the streets at night would be scary. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. I thought about giving it to Mion, but it just didn't feel right. Something dark flickered briefly in Mion's eyes. By the time, I didn't notice it. I had thought to give it to Mion. Why didn't I? <laughs> you know it. I sometimes wonder why I wasn't born a boy. Mion herself had said that with a laugh. If I didn't realize it, I hurt her. That's right. Mion is more suited for cool things. So I think having you help out here was the right choice. Huh? She unasked, probably thinking she misheard me. That uniform, it would never suit someone like me on. But if it's she on, I think it works. Huh? You mean that? Um... She on, like Rena often does, spaced out and turned bright red. Me on seemed really happy. She seemed happy that I complimented she on. Saying that it didn't shoot me on, but it suited she on, saying that it suited her seemed to make her happy. Mion's younger twin sister. She's got a pretty different personality, but she's a dead ringer for Mion. That's right! We look similar, but our personalities are completely different. I'm very kind and thoughtful, and Xion has a cold and scary personality. I think that when you guys were born, Xion got all the feminine aspects. Unlike Mion, she's cute and cheerful girl. Mion made a strange face that was both angry and happy at the same time. It seems she was happy that I said Xion was cute. Sneaking a look inside the box, it said... It said that she had just put some leftovers inside would have been a lie. There was an elegant meal stuffed inside. Is it really okay? There's not like a ton of hot sauce mixed in it or anything, right? Jeez. I'm not my sister. I wouldn't do that kind of thing. If you don't like it, you don't have to force yourself. I'll just go home and eat it myself. I'm not my sister. That's how she said it. Shion was insistent that she wasn't me on. She was saying that she was Sion, and that I shouldn't think of her as Mion. When Mion was Sion, it carried a special meaning. Mi-chan is mysterious, right? She's a girl, but it's like she's a guy. That's what Rena said. But you see, even that Mi-chan is actually really feminine. Rena, how much did Mion pay you, exactly? That's not true! Jeez, I'm trying to have a serious conversation with you, you know, you know? Then it began to pout. Now it wasn't probably isn't the right time to joke around. Michan is the club president, so she's trying hard to lead everybody. 
but she's really a very cute girl. I really don't want to forget you even forget that cage coon. It was never there never was a riddle to begin with. And I was saying the answer right from the beginning. Well the thing is is that like the reason why she acts the way she does is because she's supposed to become the head of her family. She's actually emulating her mother remarkably well. So then I I don't know what's going on anymore. Yeah. I know Kate Chan didn't mean anything wrong. At least he didn't intend to. Yeah, Kate Kun isn't the type of person to hurt others. So there's no reason for you to feel hurt by this, Michan. And what was it? Frustration, sadness. I don't know at all. Did you want it? The doll, I mean. Even if you gave it to me, Rena, it wouldn't solve anything. You're right. How about this, Michan? Try asking Kate Kun. You might be able to solve the problem if you tackle it head on. There's no way I could do that. Is it too embarrassing to do that now? I want to try again. With somebody other than Neon. This time, I can be more honest with myself. Don't get me wrong. I'm pretty fond of the relationship I have with Kei-chan. This might be selfish, but one more time. Kei-chan will definitely notice. I wonder if that's true. Then I will cheer you on. So let's find a way for you to ease your sadness. Believe me. I won't let anything happen that'll make you cry, Michan. I'll believe. I'll believe. Keichikun will definitely come to understand. He'll say he's sorry for saying something so callous. Then he'll bring you to that store and buy that doll for you as a present. Yeah. Yeah. And then, Michan, you'll say thank you. You can't fool around. Say it honestly. Yeah. Uh-uh. If I said I wanted it, Kei Chan, would you buy it for me? Neon said it quietly, doing her best to quell her embarrassment. I would have reflectively bung gun to slightly tease her to hide my embarrassment. But like Neon, I quelled that impulse. Okay, Neon. I said thanks for everything until today. I'll buy whichever one you want. My voice cracked with unfamiliar words. In order to not lose to Neon trying her best, I tried my best as well. But I'm not Neon, I'm Shion. Shion, then. I'll buy it for you, Shion. She looked down, red face she pointed at the doll in the dress of the store window. Is 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 it really okay? The one in the dress is a little expensive, isn't it? It isn't a matter of price. It's a matter of feelings. When I was saved by Kei Chan from those unsavory customers today, I was really happy. Even though my co-workers didn't save me, Kei Chan did. He grabbed me by the shoulder really firmly, right? Right then, you were really cool. Even then I was so embarrassed I couldn't properly express my gratitude. I clamped my hand down on Shion's head and ruffled her head roughly, like how I would to Rena and the others. When I did that, Shion, like Rena, would have spaced out and blushed slightly. You don't have to think too hard about it. I should have just given it to you back then. If I did that, then everybody would have gotten a good laugh. Shion didn't respond. She turned bright red like she was trying to hold back both laughter and tears. I'll buy it for you right now. Wait right here. Ah, uh, I'll go with you. Saying that, she got under my arm once again. She wasn't trying to be stoic anymore. I think I know why my sister likes you. Hey, is it alright if I start to like you a bit too, Kei-chan? The unfamiliar situation made my head start to spin. Whoa, 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 what am I doing? I had reached my limit. Smiling wryly to hide my embarrassment, I dragged Xion in the store with me. Uh-oh. <sighs> Excuse me! I want to buy that doll in the dress in the window! After a moment, I heard a voice of acknowledgement, and an apron-clad employee soon appeared. Kei-chan! And why are you here? <laughs> this has nothing to do with you. I'm on a date with Kei-chan right now. Huh? What? Why, why is Kei-chan? Even if you ask why, I'd like to know the answer myself. Mian looked at me with an expression of confusion and surprise. But that was the same with me. If she was there, then who was next to me? I said it right at the beginning. I'm Shion Sonozaki. My sister's younger twin. Hey, Chan, you even called me Shion, didn't you? Shion saying that pounded cutely. Whoa, 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 what is going on? Tell me, Shion! Not much. I was wondering what kind of person this Kei Chan you were so infatuated with was. So I happened to give him a ticket to the dessert festa. There, when I was being bothered by all sorts of troublesome customers, Kei Chan gallantly appeared and saved me by kicking them all at the curb or something like that. What? <gasps> Both me and I raised our voices pathetically, expressing our confusion to the utmost. 
Mion. You phoned me yesterday, right? I didn't! I have no idea what you're talking about! I delivered that bento for you, didn't I, Kei-chan? That was me, right? Or was it my sister? The person known as Mion Sonazaki put together a bento and bravely went to a boy's house to deliver it, maybe? Oh, you're a lot better than you look, sis! With a loud pop, a trail of smoke began to rise from Mion's head. No, I... I, I don't know, I don't know! See, Keicha? My sister says she doesn't know. So everything up until yesterday was me, Shion Sonozaki. You might have thought it was my sister pretending to be me, but with this, there's no doubt, right? I couldn't tell up from down at the moment. If there was a mirror around, I could have seen my eyes go wide from the shock. Now, little Miss Shopkeeper, could you wrap up that doll in the window? It's the first present from the person I came here to. I ca I've come to love, so make sure you tie it up nicely with a ribbon. Beyond completely frustrated, was complete is being cornered by a sly face. Shion, my brain had stopped working. What? What? Huh? Kitcha! What is going on? Well, let's go! Okay, Chan! Sorry, Derek outside, so I'll see you home! Sis, sorry, but could you go in the house and Okia Mia and have them send out a car? Maybe a van that'll fight a, fit a bike into it, please! She in contest to Shion, who is glee written all over her face. Mion was an empty shell and looked like she could burst into tears at any moment. Oh, okay, Chan! After that, Mion grumbling went unrelent were unrelenting. Oh. Oh, Mion. Mion, no! Mion, no! Shion! Shion, you bitch! I love you, but you're such a bitch! My god! Not easy being green. I love that achievement. It's great. It hasn't been a while. Stop saying it's been a while. We've seen each other every day since until yesterday, haven't we? Whatever. If you say so, we'll go with that. Someone from Xion's house came to get me in a station wagon. I had initially refused, but Xion insisted, and so I brought my bicycle and I both my bicycle and I ended up stuffed in the car. Said car was currently driving across a single bumpy road leading to Hinamizawa. For goodness sake, Xion was at Mion's level at least. Or whatever is a better actor. Every, either way, no matter what question I pressed her with, she'd slip out of it like an eel. Still, you two look so alike. If you tied your hair back like Mion does, you, would you look exactly like her? Who knows? That's probably what would happen. We're identical twins, through and through. In the past, we could just change our clothes and no one would be the wiser. I remember we'd swap places every opportunity and fooled a whole lot of people. <laughs> The middle-aged driver, wearing a black suit, heaved a heavy sigh like he was a butler. What's wrong, Kasai? That was a pretty deep sigh. Excuse me. I was just thinking that you haven't changed. You could see the amount of years of hardship on the man's face to the rearview mirror. Oh, poor Kasai. Anyway, k chan your house was around here, right? Kasai doesn't know much about Hinamizawa aside from the road that goes to the Sonosaki main house. If you leave it to him, she could take you all the way to Yakuuchi. I, I don't want that. Excuse me, could you stop at the narrow road the next right? I'll walk from there. He stopped the car at the desired place. The driver, Kasai-san, got my, my bike out of the back. Oh, sorry about that. Thank you very much for showing me home today. Was it Kei-san? Your name. Your name, that is. Ah, yes. You must be having various difficulties, but I believe she will grow tired soon, so please endure things until then. It gave me a deep, deep look of sympathy. This guy has definitely been dealing with the Sonozaki sisters ever since they were little kids. However, like Mion san, she is a kind person at heart. So that means she'll be much of a bother as Mion, right? The man's face grows in a smile, his reply lost. Alright, back me up here. Bye, Kei-chan! We'll see each other again soon! Say hi to my sister for me too! Maybe I'll start going to Hinamizawa hour tomorrow! Don't you dare! If you transfer it in, I'll transfer out of school and eco out to a school in Elkiomiya. Wow, that's really mean, Kei-chan! <sighs> a short beep of the horn. The man gave a little wave to me from the driver's seat. 
Then the car withdrew into the dark night roads, leaving dust in wake. Man, this entire day made no sense. I ran to Mion while I was with Shion, and then the former ex expression like a pigeon shot with a pellet gun had finally begun to make a strong impression on me. I feel like an absolute jackass, and you should, Keiichi. You should feel like a jackass. Cause you are being a jackass. I should have saved. Fuck. The next day, it was a strange day where Mion was desperate to regain her composure. Every time our eyes met, she would say that she had something to do, or that she had to use the washroom and run off. Unable to just watch, Rena was taking care of her the entire time. I just want to apologize. Mion san, she's acting totally strange today. I know the whole story, but it's hard to explain. There are times when girls are emotionally unstable. It's best to just leave her alone. Hmm? Turning around, I saw Rena calling me from the hallway. I wonder what it was. Cage okay, over here, over here. What is it calling me over like this? Is it a secret? Um, that is... It looks like it was a disaster. Ahaha! <laughs> Uh, yeah. Michan seemed pretty broken, but I somehow got her working again. I'm surprised you managed it. How did you, exactly? Same way I do with the television. Just come at it with 45 degree angle and hiya! <gasps> Saying that, she made a chopping motion. You know, I can't tell if you're joking or not, right? She'll be fine by tomorrow. Also, there's something I want to you to do, Cage kun I didn't mean to do anything wrong, but I still feel guilty. I'm listening. Thanks. You see, Michan is just going to pretend the last few days never happened. Never happened, huh? I see. Well, that's one way to run from it. So, you see, Cage kun could you pretend to? Then Michan can go back to normal. Just doing something as simple as that, is that really going to be okay? Please, until Michan gets her feelings in order, just go with it. Okay, I got it. Even though I shouldn't have been at fault, for some reason I felt guilty. Oh no, you're absolutely at fault, Keiichi! But also, so is Mion and so is Shion! The one at fault here is the one who knew about the entire situation and pretended to be Mion for the entire day. Shion! Ugh. But she never said once that she was Mion. Ugh. What am I supposed to get angry at? Seeing me stomping on the ground impatiently, Rena giggled. <laughs> but Kate, you you knew as well. That Mion has some cute things about her. Rena talked in a calm voice as her hair rustled in the wind. Yeah. I knew that she'd never let it be boring. Good. Following this curt reply, Rena looked up at the sky and stretched. As long as you realize that, Kate kun these past few days will soon be nothing more than a story to laugh about. Clapping Rena, I also began to stretch and looked at the sky. The clear sky towered into the distance. There is no club activities or anything today. I'm sorry, Kate kun but just for today, can you go home by yourself? It'll be all it'll all be back to normal by tomorrow, so just for today, okay? If all it took for everything to go back to normal was to leave me on alone for a today. And then it was an easy mistake, a decision to make. Got it. I can't say it directly to me on, so I'll say it to you. I still feel kind of guilty about it, so I want to apologize. Ah, no. The root of the problem was Keiichi kun saying something insensitive, right? So if you learn anything from this, you need to look at it a bit into gaining a sense of delicacy. Right, right. I'll try. That day was the shortest day of my life. Rena was talking to Mion while accompanying her through the entire time. It looked really like a fun conversation, so I reflexively thought about joining in, but I made a promise not to. It seemed that Mion was also trying her best to ignore me, so likewise I did my best to ignore her. For the first time in a while, I ate lunch alone. Mion and Rena, Rena ate theirs by themselves. As I let out a sigh in my ashen moon, Rika-chan came over and petted me on the head. Both Katie and me learned a whole lot. I'd never say it like that. It made it sound like we were having romantic problems. I didn't like that one bit. Hopefully the teacher would notice and call us to the staff room after school or something. I'm sure that Katie will grow up to be a wonderful adult. Pat, pat. Hmm. Pikachu is the studious type, so maybe you'll grow up to be an amazingly wonderful adult? Of course. When I grow up, I'll be super amazing. My, when I grow up, I'll be an amazing lady, you know. No matter how old you get, you'll still be a brat. You put money on it. What, what did you say? I saw to go snap her fingers. A washman fell from above, hitting me squarely in the head. Ah, what did you think you're doing, Sonico? Bang, smash, pinch, squeeze. It was a day I could thoroughly appreciate the value of having friends. <laughs> 
Stop hitting my cheeks, KG! You deserve it, you little brat! If I could beat you with a chair, I would! Today was Saturday, so school's ended in the blink of an eye. It really felt good to go home with the sun so high in the sky. On any other day, our club would have been up to mischief during our ample after-school time. But today, Rikachan's rehearsal for tomorrow's walk and Agashi to go to. How's that going, Rikachan? Do you have it down in practice? I'll try harder than last year. You were so exhausted and sweaty after last year's ceremony. She'll look far more fit for the role this year. Please look forward to the fruits of her training! The Watanagashi Festival everyone had been talking about was tomorrow, wasn't it? The festival being in June felt a little early to me, but the onset of summer came quickly this year, so it fit the image of a summer festival pretty well. Okay, we'll be off then. Look forward to tomorrow! Good day to you all! Sadako and Rika-chan waved, waved to us energetically, and then left. You know, I never asked. Where is the festival happening anyway? I don't remember there being any there being anywhere around here that seems suited for hosting one. They do it at the Fudere Shrine. We went there for a walk one day, remember? It was that place with that really good view. Oh, I don't remember. There was a shrine all the way up on that hill, wasn't there? It seemed far too grand for Hinamizawa. There's a great meeting hall in the shrine, too. The older people get together there and sing karaoke and practice calligraphy from time to time. It's more like a recreational facility than a simple shrine. I see. I guess it makes sense that it looks so grand, then. Mi-chan, is your family going to help set up today? Yep. We have male hands for that. Most of our relatives came from town to help. Male hands, huh? Well, I mean, I have nothing to do at home today, so... Would it be a problem if I squirmed my way in there to help out, too? Huh? Uh, you want to help us, Kei-chan? Not if it'll bother you all. I was just kind of interested. We had bond dances and other festivals in the town I used to live in. But I didn't even know where they took place, much less wanting to help. You could say that I had absolutely no connection to that region. Come, having come to Hinamizawa, though, it really made me feel like this place was a home that I had returned to. Before I knew it, I harbored a little interest in the small community activity of preparing for a festival the day before. I wonder if you'll be able to, Keichika. There's a lot of building tents and setup chairs. Setting up chairs, I hear it's pretty hard physical labor. I mean, I wouldn't be doing it alone, right? The more hands we have, the faster it'll go. Yun looked happy to hear that, but at the same time her expression was complex, tinged with hesitation. Then I gave her a last push for me. It's decided then. You should go for it, Cage Kun. He's all yours, Mi-chan. Put him through the ringer. Well, I can't argue with a recommendation from Rena. Okay then. Go home first, put on some clothes, work clothes, and then come to the shrine. Oh, and you might want to bring a towel to wipe your sweat too. Got it. I may look scrawny, but I'm actually quite like breaking a sweat under the hot sun. Careful, you don't hurt your back, okay? Right, enough of my old man spiel. I'll go to the shrine, too, as soon as I've changed. Mi-chan, you do your best, too. Bye-bye. Mion waved vigorously at us and left. As far as I could tell from her gallant retreating figure, she seemed to have recovered from the weak state she had yesterday. Girls are quick to get over things. Mi-chan is already fine. Right. Her switching back to normal so cleanly really makes it easy for me to talk to her. It was kind of fun, though, wasn't it? Kind of like Cinderella? Like, you can't meet her anymore once the magic wears off. Then I began to giggle a fair bit in amusement. Did she like this sort of thing? Incidentally, me going along with it gave me a weird, hard-to-describe feeling. Did I turn myself into a plaything, or did they do it for me? If you think it's so funny, you should try pretending to be different Rena, too. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Hey, Chicken, what kind of Rena would you want to meet? One with a bus size at, at least 90. Huge knockers that you're okay with me touching. I can't do that. She'd be great at cooking and make me lunch and come see me in the mornings. I do that already. I pull Rena's head into a tight grip and start to pet it. You're Rena Ryugu, right? Rena, not Rena. So you just stay as Rena forever, got it? Thanks. Have fun helping set up for the festival. You got it. Let's meet up tomorrow. I got changed right away and slinging a towel around my neck like Mion suggested, I rushed set off to the shrine.
stirrups. At the shrine, there were more people than you'd imagine even live in Hinamazawa here. All condoning off areas, setting up camp frameworks, chatting amongst themselves as they do so. All right? Where is Mion? The liveliness of the throng didn't make it easy to look for her. I searched around as if I already worked there, and suddenly the principal called out to me. Hmm, if it isn't my monokun! Interesting! Have you come to help with the Watanagashi setup? Um, uh, hello. Yes, I was just wondering if there's anything I could help with. How come commendable your attitude is? Feel free to sweat to your heart's content. <laughs> Spurred on by the principal, I came upon a group of people setting up tents. Oh, what's this? It's Mayamata-chan! Did you come all this way to help us? I hadn't found Mion yet, but I suppose I'd get in her way if I ran into her. Yeah, I'm here to help. Just tell me where you need me. You young ones have all the vitality. Here, grab some more gloves. Ever built a tent before? No, never. I imagine it'd be kind of fun. <sighs> like, to like help set up for a festival? I think that kind of thing would be really fun. Delighting in teaching a new skill to someone younger, plenty of people happily taught me all sorts of things. Okay, kid, go inside the tent and tie up just the cord for the top. After that, we'll stand it up and tie up the rest of them. Butterfly knots are okay, right? There and there. All done? We're standing it up! One, two, three! What was once nothing more than a collapse tent was raised on four splendid legs before my eyes in mere moments. Whoa, seeing it put together like this was actually pretty moving. Come on, no time to stare and wonder. You've got a lot more to do. We pack the tents into the truck so we can get them from here. They're heavy, so take someone with you. Nah, I'm good. I may look strong but I'm actually pretty strong. Wah! They look light enough, so I thought they were, but they're heavy. So I told you to have someone help. Come on, said the man, lifting it up with a grunt and taking it away under his arm. Either I'm weak or these old guys all have superhuman strength. Let's go! You're the younger one here, so we're going to make you sweat for it. Do your best! Fear after work is the best! Um, I'm a miner. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm too young for that. <laughs> Sweat ripped from my body. I had been fully and completely absorbed in helping them. I would never have thought the cold barley tea from the Women's Society could taste as delicious. You're so young! Make sure you drink a lot. Thank you. It was then that I realized a crowd had formed near the shrine the ways off. I took a closer look. I saw a girl dressed in a shrine maiden garb and a handful of old men looking like they were preparing for the ceremony together. Is that Rika-chan? Hey, Rika-chan! Do your best! I shouted and it seemed like she heard me. Rika-chan, positively exploding with vitality, answered with a smile. The old guys with me watched Rika-chan as well with distant gazes. rika chan is doing a great job. She seems far more used to this than she did last year. The old lady who gave me the tea clasped what looked like a prayer piece in her hands and said, Rika-sama, we thank you, we thank you. And just like that, began to respectfully pray to her. Huh? I just remember they called it the Furere Shrine. Wasn't it Rika's full name? Wasn't Rika-chan's full name Rika Furere? The man staying next to her answered my question. That's right. Rika-chama's Furere clan is an ancient non rule and has worshipped Odoshiro-sama for generations. Huh. I always gotten the feeling she wasn't quite your average person, but it turned out she was some of an esteemed family. After her father, who was the shrine priest, died the year before last, she's been doing her best to learn the rituals. I wish the priest could have been here to see how wonderfully she's grown up. What? Rika Chen's father passed away? Okay, break time over! Let's get to the chairs! We're not using back We're not using back to the gym in Okinamiya. Maki-san, pull the truck around here and take a few people with you. Alright, Maribada Kun, get to work on the one last job. Yeah. It's gonna make me do more work. I can't tell if they know I'm a miner or not, but the old men all cheer me on, encourage me to do my best, and that the beer will be great. <laughs> I'm a miner! <laughs> I can't drink beer! I'm not a miner. I'm an adult. I'm 26. I'm 27 this year. That's such an odd concept to me. Hey, Chan! Working hard, I see! I passed my Mion. She's carrying a big cardboard box. Looks like she was right in the middle of working as well, judging by the sweat sweeping, seeping into her shirt. It seemed like it, well, I wasn't the only one with my hands full. I'm working my ass off! You work hard too! The beer's gonna be great! <laughs> we were worked to the bone until the sun began to set and start cooling off. It was 
soon full-fledged night. The clear sound of the Higurashi eased the moderate pain I felt. The older guys began their night before drinking party in the tent, a bit far off. Causing quite a ruckus. The shrine grounds, on the other hand, had turned into a lonely road trickled by the cool... Cool evening breeze, despite being so festive just a little while ago. The wind felt good. I leaned on one of the stone guardian dogs at the front of the, st of the shrine. Gave my legs a good stretch as I let my mind wander. Suddenly a paper cup filled with barley tea was thrust before me. Hey, Chan. Great work. Here's some tea for you. You're so considerate. Thanks, me. Her voice sounded exactly the same, but it felt somehow different. Wait, you're... It's Shion. Hey, it's Shion. Don't get giving me on all the credit. She isn't considerate at all. Don't get us confused, okay? Shion, you little... It's not I've caught you. You're not getting away. <laughs> it was your mistake, Kei-chan. I never said I was anyone other than Shion. Ugh, I guess we can't argue with that. <laughs> That's right. You're no match for my older sister. So I can't let you be a match for me, either. Anyway, your tea. It's going to get warm. Come on, please cheer up. I'm trying to make it up to you with this tea. I put laxatives in it. Well, she did come all the way here to give it to me. I guess I'll accept it. Took the cup and downed it in one gulp. And then suddenly, ah! I heard a loud shout and it got stuck in my throat. <laughs> oh! Oh, which one is it this time? Is it the real me on? She on! Why are you hitting you with k chan again? Because, unlike you, I'm very considerate. k chan is so sweaty, I couldn't leave him alone, so I brought him some tea. By the way, why are you holding two cups of tea? Beyond's face went bright red, and she tried to hide the paper cups behind her back. Uh, uh, well, this is... There's no way you, such a rough, timid, good sister of mine, would ever briskly bring a male classmate teas there. Is that so? What are they? What are those two cups of tea? So, these are... Well, uh... Um... Right! I was just so thirsty, I figured I'd drink two! <laughs> That's just so like you! Come on, chug, chug! As she cheered at her, me on down both the cups of tea, one after the other. <coughs> what a fabulous drink that was! I expect nothing less from you. Okay, Chan, you give her a hand too. Wait, suddenly the situation has gotten unbelievable. Mion doesn't usually get manipulated so easily like that. I've known for a while now, but Shion is terrifying! Mion, you can't hold your own- You can't hold your own against Shion? I hate her! And lately I hate her even more! <sighs> Just then I heard the snap of a camera shutter. Ah, it's Tomotake-san! Tomotake-san! <laughs> Good evening! The festival's coming up tomorrow! Thanks for all your hard work setting it up today. Good evening! Oh, uh, Shion chan It's quite unusual for you to come here. Oh, hey, it's Tomotake and Takano-san! Good evening! It's been a while, hasn't it? So, you're that transfer student I've been hearing about, Keiichi Marabara-kun, right? She really did bring me up job today, I'm impressed. I feel like I've seen this photographer guy some before. Um, have we met before? I'm glad you remembered. We passed many times on the road, Cage Kun. I'm Tomodake. I'm a freelancing photographer from Tokyo. And do you recognize me? I'm sorry, but I don't. She's Mion to Takano san. Do you remember when you were at the doctor's office when you still had that co had a cold cage son? Cage chan? Mion san's one of the nurses who works there. Call me Takano. I'm pleased to meet you. I wonder if she squeezed over them like in the shrine. She squeezed over them like in the shrine storeroom. That's very thoughtful of you. Tomotake-san seemed to be quite entertained at the Sonozaki twins being in the same place and took a picture after picture. I've heard about them, but this is the first time I've actually seen the pair of identical twins. You really do look exactly alike. <laughs> We're not just alike on the outside. See, your underwear matches too! Yeah, you idiot! What the heck are you doing? <laughs> Things have never been as lively as the two of them were together. I had thought that they were exactly the same at first, but I had started to get a handle on which one is which. Mion is Mion, and Shion, well, as far as far better acting than Mion was in the first place, someone that could spurn Mion so easily could not have shown such weakness to those large buckets at, Mi at Angel Mort. If that was the case, then the cowardly behavior from that day was, it was all a complete act! They are even more alike than they were when they were little. 
I heard even their parents had a hard time telling which was which. That's really easy to imagine. I totally understand what they must have gone through. Takno gave me a kind of odd look, but explain, explaining would have been a pain, so I didn't bother. Tomatake, are you going straight back to Tokyo after you get your pictures from the festival? Yep. No, I would rather just stay here forever. Silly adult things, that's all. I hope your photos win a fa fabulous prize soon. I've been praying for it. Thanks. Next time I come, I'll bring the pictures I took you all to took of all you today. My Baraku, you did a lot of work today. You must be tired from all the physical labor you're not used to. Uh, well, I'm tired, but it was still pretty fun. Ah, oh, you. I'm so jealous. Takano-san smiled with an adult elegance that no one in my circle of friends possessed. The wind caught her hair. She gives off an intelligent beauty. Oh my. Why, hello everyone. Seemed like our merry crowd was standing out this time when an overweight older man addressed us. And again, it was someone I thought I knew. If I recall correctly, he's a policeman, isn't he? Oh, Oshisan. Good evening. Doing a preliminary security inspection for tomorrow? No. <laughs> Something like that. Oh, if it isn't Tomotake-san. It's only been a while. I'm honored you remember my name. You really do love Hinamazawa, don't you? The apartments around here are far cheaper than the ones in Tokyo. You should just move here and get it over with. I know a retailer I could introduce you to. I appreciate the thought. I'd very much like to follow up on that. <laughs> Alright, everyone have a good year. And Happy New Year to the Sonozaki twins, too. Happy New Year, Detective Oshi. We appreciate your work. We'd like to end this year's festival with the least amount of inconvenience possible. That's pretty strict on me. <laughs> Detective Oshi left us with a low laugh and headed off to talk to some police officers standing a ways away. I gave Mion a glance and saw her making an annoyed face, as if she was blaring bullets at someone she hated. Yeah, it'd be nice if the police didn't have to do anything during Watson Nagashi this year. <laughs> you like this place too, don't you? Oh, you mean to say you dislike it, Jiro-san? I quite enjoy such fantastic stories, you know. Especially with times being so dry and uninteresting. The curse of Oroshiro-sama, you mean... Curse, Tomotake-san used a troubling word, then suddenly someone tugged on my arm. Okay, Chan. I'm pretty hungry. Wanna go to the tent with the drinks and have some candy and sweets? Mm, I'm up for that. I've got a little hunger as well. Okay, let's go! A moment later, Shion said something to to Takano and Tomotake that stung my ears and gave me a start. I wonder who will die and who will disappear this year. Pulled back from Mion's grip and stopped abruptly. Shion, what did you just say? It felt like the air around us dried out all of a sudden. Let's go, Kei-chan. They're talking about something silly anyway. You still haven't told Kei-chan? I made it a point not to spread stories like that. Shion's cold and, un and quiet tone and Mion's harsh voice were quite the contrast. Hey, wait, hold on. What are you talking about? If you know something, then tell me. It doesn't feel right being the only one left out, you know? I don't understand this. Someone please explain it to me. However, Mion didn't seem at all willing to grant my request. She squeezed my hand in hers a bit, but when she realized I had to hold my ground on this topic, she let go. I'm going to go to the drinking tent first, then. If you don't come soon, Kei-chan, there won't be any left for you. Ah, I get it already! I'll be there soon. Mion left, trotting towards a particularly noisy tent on the other side of the shrine grounds. Before she got there, she stopped and turned back around. I showed no signs of going after her, though, so she ran off. I could tell if you haven't heard, I suppose. But it might be smarter not to ask and go with her to eat dessert. Hey, now, you're starting- you've got my full attention here. I'm not going to leave without asking at this point. I think Kei-chan has the right to hear this, too. My sister's just stealing that from you. Sean's voice was bristled with thorns, as if somehow blaming me on- What on earth are you talking about? I don't really like people acting so self-important. Takano-san, really realizing how prepared I was, looked across the group. After confirm confirming that there were no objections, she opened her mouth. Do you believe in curses, my baraku? Curses? I think they're interesting, but I don't really... I felt their cynical stares and winced. It's like they were telling me it was stranger not to believe in curses. You're not wrong, Kei-chan. Curses are just superstition. It's only natural that you wouldn't believe in them. 
Besides, you can take all the time you want to decide whether to believe in curses after you've heard us through, said Takano-san, giving a little smile. They're trying to scare me. At least, that's what it feels like. Alright, I'll start. Cage kun do you know about the Hinamazawa Dam Project? Oh yeah, the other day at Angel Mart, Shion or Rion rather told me all about it. You mean the plan for the giant dam that would flood all the humans out, right? That's right. Residents of the town banded together to fight it, and a fierce battle with the government unfolded. I heard that too. The entire village united, using all the power at their disposal, mass media, political influence, and other things, and fought the country. The way Mion described it made it sound like a boast. Oh, you know quite a bit about it. Yes, you're right. It's practically an epic tale. Just about a thousand or so villagers banding together and rejecting the government's plans. Did you hear this from my sister? She likes those kind of ethics, you know. Yeah, she told me. There was, however, an office for the Hinamazawa residents of Opposition Factor. It was the Shrine. You know the Assembly Hall. That's where it used to be. Now that the whole thing is over, the senior citizens just use it for group activities. At the time, though, it was their last bastion. Takano-san explained this, pointing her finger towards the Assembly Hall. I had been carrying things in and out of there all day. I mean, I would understand if they put an office like that in the mayor's house or something. But having an office on Shrine Grounds made it feel like it was a base camp for the Sengoku period warriors. That was basically the mindset, though. Placing the main force in the shrine dedicated to Orishiro-sama, Hinamizawa's guardian deity, was like a prayer for victory. Orishiro-sama. That was definitely it. They mentioned Orishiro-sama's curse before. Is it the same Orishiro-sama? Do you know about Orishiro-sama, Keichikun? It was the name of the god worshipped at the shrine. It is said that he protects all of Hinamizawa. Well, I don't really know much about him. I see. I think Takano-san knows more about the rest. Tag, you're it! Well, that is generally the whole story. Orishiro-sama is the ancient god passed down in Hinamizawa, and the villagers say that he had been protecting this sanctuary from the poisons of the outside world. So essentially, he's a basic standard guardian deity. I guess you can find that sort of god anywhere you go. There's research in whether worshipping Orishiro-sama is a manifestation of a kind of elitism, too. What I mean is that the worshippers might think of themselves as chosen people. Believing yourself chosen, a nationalistic belief that you are part of a superior race, or that you are a special clan chosen by the gods. They believe that they are a superior clan, so they believe in strongly in cooperating with each other, but they also be also end up being exclusionary towards other clans. I won't go into much too much detail, but sort of national and religious ideas that led to war. Of course, that goes for Japan too. A long time ago, the people of Hinamizawa strongly believed themselves different from humans, that they were above them. They believed that interaction with the lower world would sully their souls. So everyone believed that if one from the lower world came to the village, they would be sullied and suffer the wrath of Orishiro-sama. Apparently, that kept everyone away. Villages that hate outsiders come up all the time in Ki Ki Kida Kidarichi novels. They're often run-of-the-mill villages of xenophobes. Well, they'll deny it to preserve their pride. It was all a long time ago, after all. Things are different now. Shion followed up quickly, having sensed the thorns in Tomotake's words. Tomotake-san, embarrassed at what he said, scratched his head. Hmm. So this shrine where Sushiro-sama thinks Hinamizawa is holy ground. It's a symbol of their traditional hatred for the outside world. I get it. So that's why they chose the shrine of Hinamizawa's guardian spirit as their basis for operations. To resist the solid dam per construction project that came from the outside. Correct. Correct, Swan Takano, pleased. She must dislike stupid people. Superstition, every last bit of it. The villagers give everything desperate to, op to oppose the dam construction. And right in the midst of it, the incident drove home the finishing blow. Oshiro-sama's curse. Ah! The game's freaking out. Ah! Yeah! The person managing the construction site of the Hinamizawa Dam was murdered. Four years ago, I believe? They took the newspapers by storm. Do you remember it? Uh, no, not really. He had a fight with a subordinate and was beaten to death with a pickaxe. His limbs and head were torn off and the remains disposed of. One of those dismembered homicides. They were all the rage at one point. Such a gruesome incident. But it was just that, an incident. Person caused the incident after all. Should they really put it down to the curse? And then the following year, 
the men who had organized Hinamizawa's group of damned proponents. He fell from a cliff while on vacation and died. Apparently, it was an accident. Of course, most of Hinamizawa was hostile towards him. The police were all over the case, as if it were a homicide, but in the end, it was just judged to be an accident. Now it's an accident. It's the most curse-like one, but it's still far-fetched. And then, the next year, this time, the priest of the shrine contracted an unknown illness and suddenly died. This may sound a little rude, but the old priest was kind of wait-and-see type. The whole village was in an uproar about the dam, but he was kind of... He just kind of didn't seem to want to bother. The shrine is a symbol of opposition movements, and the priest, well, his attitude worked against him. The villagers at the time had hoped for a leader, but their hopes were betrayed. Some people were apparently pretty angry, too. So at the time, all the older people were like, This is Oda Shiro-sama's curse. That's what they said. It didn't... It did seem like every year, damn-related people in the village had resentment toward were dying. It was pretty creepy. Oh, and also, it's interesting. All of the all the incidents and accidents always happen on the night of the Watanagashi festival. What? See? It's starting to sound like a curse now, isn't it? Then, the year after that, in other words, last year, the sister-in-law of the man who was the leader of the damn proponents, the one who accidentally died, was discovered dead, having beaten to death. Of course, they caught that criminal. See? It really seems like a curse, huh? Four years in a row. Every one of the incidents and accidents were relatively commonplace. But every single one of them happened in the night at the worship in Orishiro-sama? That's not normal. The old folks have been blindly accepting Orishiro-sama's curse because of the incidents in the past few years. Even younger people, too. At first they thought it was stupid, but now nobody makes fun of it. And I can see where she's coming from. Even me. Even I don't think that there was a curse at all, thinking at all the incidents that this makes me feel like maybe it's real. For example, look at the preparations for the festivals you were doing today. Everything might have gone crazy during the battle against the dam, but just a few years ago, the Watanagashi Festival was never this well attended. Well, I guess you're right. If you didn't have Orishiro sama to talk about, you, he wouldn't be coming to the festival like this, huh? There's a lot of people who say that infidels might be punished, so they really need to go to Orishiro samas festival. She nodded as if she were mocking herself. So what about now? Keiichi-kun, you're starting to get the feeling that maybe, just maybe, the curse is real, aren't you? I mean, you can't just laugh off people related to the damn construction project all dying like that. If even I feel like this now, then the more superstitious members of the village must feel stronger than that. Well, I mean, I still don't think there's a curse. I can understand those that believe there is, though. Wow, Keiichi-chan! You really keep a cool head about this. Sean grinned, realizing I had rejected the curse. If it's neither a curse nor a coincidence, then what should we make of these incidents? Sakuno said, smiling playfully as if posing a riddle. Neither a curse nor a coincidence, but every year someone dies. What should we make of that, then? Tomotake-san, catching on the fact that I had no idea what to make of it, opened his mouth and came to my aid. Sakuno-san is suggesting that it might be the work of real people. Eh? Huh? simple process of elimination would have gotten me there. I'd just taken a bit back and not have realized the answer immediately. Well, think about it. If there's neither a curse nor coincidence, then people must be willingly carrying it out. It's the only explanation, right? Press talked to hand. I smiled bitterly in spite of myself. There I was just a few minutes ago, thinking that the very concept of a curse was absolutely absurd. And she just suggested it was someone doing it. I ended up thinking there aren't, there wasn't any way it could be a person. But Takano san was right. If it was, it was either a curse or as a person's doing. It's unrealistic. If unrealistic things like curses didn't exist, then obviously the next step would be start thinking it was people behind it. But if that was the case, I glanced at Shion. If the culprit is a person, they, they have to be someone from Hinamizawa. That's what the police officer Oshi-san thinks right now, too. Hey, wait. That can't be. I thought I know... I thought... I now knew the reason Mion didn't want to talk about this. If Orishiro Sama's curse really existed, then that's fine. It'd be divine judgment from the Dan Project business. If Orishiro Sama's curse didn't exist, which it obviously didn't, and the culprit would more likely be someone from Hinamizawa, the villagers had worked desperately to oppose the Dan Construction Project. I knew that they used all sorts of methods to fight against it. One of those methods was... Maybe... People whisper that Orishiro Sama's curse could be the doing a secret group in the Dan Resistance Movement. She dryly put words in my exact thoughts. Of course, I didn't expect it. She was from Hinamizawa, so I didn't think she'd come out and say it herself. If you calm down and think about it, anyone could come in the same conclusion. 
there wouldn't be a motive for anyone but people who benefit from opposing the dam, right? I guess that's true. And bringing to the existence of the darker side of the Dan conflict would be rude to Mion, who spoke to it so highly. So I couldn't just accept Sion, Sion's seemingly logical point, viewpoint. One more thing. The police probably don't know this. There's proof that someone from Hina Mizawa committed these crimes. And the people of Hina Mizawa know it. Huh? What? Sion rebukes me to keep my voice down. Sorry. But this proof, what is it? It's the fact that one person dies, and one more person disappears. One more person disappears. Does that mean that someone besides the one who died from the curse was a sacrifice? What do you mean by disappear? They just vanish and then you never see them again? That's right. Suddenly and without a trace. As she spoke, she only pretended to do a trick with her hands like she were making a magic hat disappear. One dies a mysterious death, and one disappears, never to be seen again. A strange vanishing act. But then why? How does that equate to someone from Hinamazawa being the culprit? Well, actually, Hinamizawa was the one re that has this really old legend. It's about people who offer sacrifices to Oroshiro sama to calm his wrath. Sacrifices? Yes. They say they used to wrap a living person up in a bamboo mat and let them slowly sink down into a bottomless swamp. Takano san, though explaining something pretty terrible, had a look of glee on her face as she did so. As far as I can glean from the literature, it actually took three days and three nights for them to sink. See? Even people a long time ago liked symbolism. As the body sunk, Oroshiro Sama's anger would be quelled. Both were submerged into the deep. <laughs> Takuro no san is the only one laughing at this. Was she telling her joke or something? Shen didn't move to deny it, but I felt the difference in temperature between her cool expression and Takuro no san's. This whole conversation, well, you can think of matching about hearing it, but it's the secret history of Hinamizawa. Everyone who's been in Hinamizawa for a long time knows it, but they don't talk about it. Takano san's not from here, but she knows quite a lot. She really likes local history, folk legends, and stuff like that. She learned a lot about it by herself, too. I'm really not all that amazing. Just curious, that's all. Like a child. I just want to see scary things for the fun of it. Tawamatake san laughs, a little bit embarrassed. Wait a minute. What does that mean? The other person who disappeared during the incident. You're saying they're offered as a sacrifice? Yeah. Yeah. Shion answers in one word before anyone can speak. Someone dies, and then someone disappears. Hmm. Well, whether they actually get sacrificed or not is a different issue. But every time someone happened in the past, one person died and one other person disappeared. For example, the first one, where the dime side manager was killed. Apparently one of the people responsible for that still hasn't been arrested. Couldn't that be... Doesn't that just mean he managed to get away? I don't see why we should treat him as a sacrifice. Well, that's basically what I think, too. There was also the year after that, with the leader of the dam proponents. You said he fell from a cliff and died while on vacation, right? Apparently his wife fell as well. The police investigated fervently, but they'd never been able to find the wife's corpse. The river under the cliff was actually pretty high at the time, though. She could have just been buried under the sand at the bottom of some lake downstream the, some, or something. The perpetrator of a dismemberment like that wouldn't want to get caught, so they'd be desperate to run away and hide, too. I thought I heard about cases where the corpse wouldn't surface after the person drowned in a swelled river like that. She vanished because of an unfortunate accident, but I didn't see the connection to sacrifices. If you took each of the past incidents in turn, none of the disappearances seemed out of place. A year after that, the priest suddenly falling ill and dying is much clearer. His wife left a suicide note. They found it in her house the night the priest died said something along the lines of her quelling Oshiro Sama's wrath through her death. The curse seemed to turn up in this one, though. Well, we may never know the truth of the matter. The swamp the wife dried herself in was the giant, bottomless one Takano mentioned before. The police investigated it, but all they could find were several of her possessions. They never found the corpse. The police suspected it was a fake suicide, and they're still investigating it now. Someone dies every year, and in the same way, someone goes missing every year. Is she trying to tell me that everyone who vanished was kidnapped by some extremely efficient means and dumped into the bottom of the swamp, still alive and drowned to death? But a curse? That's unbelievable in its own right. Next year, what was it? The damn proponent's sister-in-law? She was killed. And, the same way, someone disa disappeared. It was a boy around my age named Sadashi Hojo. He was the nephew of by marriage the woman killed. She uncut in with a strong, slightly strong tone of voice. She knew the boy who had disappeared pretty well. 
At least that's the vibe I was getting. Well, that about sums everything up. One person always dies, and one person always suddenly disappears. Even the suddenness aside. The fact that each incident involved one person disappearing. Uh, so that means the first person who dies is because of Lord Shido-sama's curse. The second person who vanishes is because the villagers sacrificed them? Is that it? Kei-chan, there is no curse. Someone kills the first person and then the guy is without the curse. And someone takes away the second person to be sacrificed. But Shion, that means that means the criminals that the criminal is in the village. That's what I've been guessing from the start. It's pretty shocking though, you know? We live in the Showa period. It's kinda hard to believe people are committing murder like it's nothing using some ancient justifications, huh? Didn't have anything to do with our discussion. But I got a feeling that maybe Shion didn't like Himizawa very much. Mion enjoyed talking about Hinamizawa and its epic tales, so she had avoided talking about Orishiro-sama's curse, which didn't paint Hinamizawa in a good light, no matter how you looked at it. She was trying not to give me a bad impression of the village, so she didn't say anything. Shion, on the other hand, was somehow different. She wasn't rejecting the concept of a curse to purge Hinamizawa of its bad impression, rather because she strongly believed that a member of the village was a criminal behind this. Her conviction seemed a bit removed from the tight sense of community held by the people of Hinamizawa. Once upon a time, they looked so alike you could mistake one for the other. Talking to her now, I get a powerful feeling that Shion had a completely different personality than Mion. Than everyone else. They all think someone from Hinamizawa did it, right? Neither Shion nor Takano-san answered that. The deafening silence took me all that needed to be said. Now let me ask another question. If someone from Hinamizawa is the culprit, then who is it? Neither Shion nor Takano-san had a reply to that question either. Though it may have been rude to ask, I'd hoped that he wouldn't have one. The reason I asked was to argue that their explanation that the culprit was from Hinamizawa is nothing more than one possibility. She didn't caught on to my plan. She gave a pained smile as at my, my petty spite and opened her mouth to speak. All I said really just amounts to circumstantial evidence anyway. If any of us really knew who it was, we would already gotten them to the police's hands already. As would anybody. Then what about Takano-san? She too smiled dryly as she on and had and opened her own mouth. Um, well, I'd like to clear one thing up. I'm not a detective or anything, alright? In all honesty, I'm not really interested in who the culprit is. <laughs> Takano-san, you sure are a handful! Tomotake-san gave a bitter laugh at her surprising opinion on the matter. You see, I just like cruel and atrocious ancient traditions and fairy tales. I only enjoy them from the curious onlooker's perspective. So even from this string of events, it's not so much finding out who the culprit is, but enjoying thinking about how the old tradition displayed why the incidents themselves seem, still seem to have some pretty deeply roots around here. Although she described herself as nothing more than a curious onlooker, her smile was as sharp as the tip of a blade. Women f like her felt very strange and a little scared of me. Maybe it's just that I was fearful and awe of a person whose emotions I couldn't comprehend. Well, I don't think any of this is interesting at all. The Watanagashi Festival is coming out tomorrow, but I don't want anyone to die or disappear. Tomorrow, huh? That's right. I completely slipped my mind. A string of murder incidents people attributed to Orishiro-sama's curse, it wasn't over. If last year's incident wasn't the end, then tomorrow night at the festival, would someone die and someone disappear? I do wonder who will die tomorrow and who will disappear, though, Takano said, rounding a comb through her hair with elegant movements, with a thin smile and a voice that nearly made me shudder. She almost looked like she was enjoying the thought of incidents that could happen tomorrow. Then out of the blue, we heard a loud round of applause. We seemed to be ending the drinking party early. Right, I was making Mion wait this whole time, wasn't I? I should go back to her soon. You're teasing the kid too much, Takano-san. Now Keiichi couldn't think it's all true. <laughs> I apologize. It's that bad habit of mine again, said Takano-san, sticking out her tongue bashfully. The strange strangeness of her expression was nowhere to be found. Well, when Takano-san was an innocent child like you, she couldn't help wanting to poke fun at them. It's a really bad habit. Hey, kun you listened to everything so earnestly that she ended up being carried away. Unlike Takano-san, Tomotake-san seemed to be totally normal with common sense. They were apologizing after realizing what kind of impression they had given me. The stuff Takano-san said is all fiction. If it made you harbor any bad impressions about Hina Mazawa, then we apologize for that. Jisho-san! You apologize too, Takano-san. Tell him you're sorry for scaring him. Takano-san and Tomotake-san were arguing and messing around now. A strained air around us that already dissipated. Okay, Chan, you should get going soon, too. Mion's the jealous type. If she sees me, she'll probably start a fight. So I'll just be going home. 
Really? Then I'll go see what Mion's doing and apologize for making her wake, I guess. Sorry for being such a nuisance, Keishkun. Could you tell Mion Chun that we're sorry for borrowing you for so long? Uh, yeah, I don't think telling her will make her feel any better, but sure. Tomotake san and Takano san, standing next to each other, both begin to chuckle. Okay then, Keichan. Let's try and run into each other at tomorrow's festival. We'll see each other. I mean, it's us we're talking about, after all. We'll be making so much trouble, it'll be hard for you not to find us. Shion and I said our goodbyes to Tomotake san and Takano san. Before we could leave, Tomotake Takano san called out to us. Thanks for listening so earnestly to what I had to say. You're just so good at listening. I had a great time talking to you. Good at listening? No, not at all. I was just in a state of per perpetual bewilderment from all the shocking topics being thrown at me one after another. Did you like my story today? Well, it was pretty interesting. Then I'll tell you some more sometime, okay? There are a lot of pretty interesting new legends and fairy tales about Hina Mazawa. Of course, a lot of strange and creepy ones, too. I choose a bunch of my favorites and I'll tell you about them. I was kind of happy, but kind of worried. I couldn't help but smile dryly and scratch up my head. Okay, h -kun, you can go now. Takano san is just messing with you. They said goodbyes again and run off. I heard Ta Tomotake call out behind him in a clear voice that we would see each other at the festival tomorrow. And when I went to the tent, Mion was waiting for me. She was nowhere to be found. I made her wait so long, that she got bad and went home. After asking some adults passerby, I heard that she went home, talking to some relatives. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. But my regret for having made Mion wait wasn't enough to triumph over the impression Takano-san and Shion on Shion's uncanny story left on me. Serial murder incidents that happened four years in a row, with tomorrow's events make this the fifth. And the possibility that someone from Hinamizawa was carrying this all out under the guise of a curse, a queer tradition of ritual sacrifice entirely unbecoming of the Showa period we live in. I regretted it a little. Though it was too late. If none of those creepy stories had anything to do with me, and I should have let Mion pull me away from that crowd. I felt a little ashamed for letting me, my cheap curiosity get the better of me. Curiosity killed the cat! But results brought it back. And in this case, though, it's not gonna. But, you know, whatever. Oh, that's a lot of tips! Well, then I'm going to read the tips and then I'll call it a night. A little elbow grease with a cup of tea. A scrapbook one. Odoshiro Sama's Curse. In the ancient Onigafuchi village, the anger of Odoshiro Sama's curse was feared above all. However, it is seldom stated anywhere that uh, th what eventually happens and what sort of divine judgment or curse befalls them when Odoshiro Sama is angry. For various reports, all hell will break loose. Demons will come flooding out. The miasma from hell will flood outward and kill every villager, letting not a single one escape. The ones invoking images of the village being annihilated stand out the most. These terrifying ideas of, of divine punishment are in alignment with many other religious be beliefs regarding the apocalypse, hell, and it's easy to imagine that they are just ways of convincing people to obey the teachings in order to prevent such an end. The conditions of inciting Odoshiro Sama's wrath are likely the same as the taboos in the Onigafuchi village. I believe that when an act is performed that violates one of these taboos, Odoshiro-sama was termed angry, and in order to quell his anger, they performed an aforementioned sacrificial ritual. Oh. Human sacrifice ritual. The sacrificial ritual was simply drowning, was a simple drowning involving pl plunging sacrifices in the Onigafuchi swamp, which is considered hall hallowed. For the rituals of the Onigafuchi village, this one was unique to that sacrifice would sink slowly over the long course of three days and three nights. I believe that it wasn't so much the killing of this sacrifice that was important, but rather the symbolism of them sinking into the submerging of Odoshiro-sama's anger. For that purpose, they must have had a passion for learning various methods of keeping the sacrifice from sinking too slowly, too quickly, to force them to sink more slowly. Unfortunately, as far as I can tell from the records, these methods are not recorded. My thoughts are that they were... They may have used logs or some similar material to create a raft, then set up a scaffold, scaffold at the, on there, hung the sacrifice up with ropes, and let them sink little by little over time into the swamp. But if that were the case, it would not be strange that the ritual implements used for such a ceremony were honored as holy and enshrined somewhere.
implements used for the ritual. Ritual tools utilized by ancient religious ceremonies are commonly referred to as implements or ritual instruments, and even now some of them are enshrined in the property of Friday's Shrine and the Three Families. However, the identifiable tools are all decorative and none appear to have been used in rituals governing in the dark side of the Onigafuchi village. As the Endo era came to an end and many ritual and traditional rituals were lost, were they lost as well, or perhaps buried in the darkness? I don't believe so. Both the implements used on the night of the festival of Onikakushi and those used during the cer sacrificial ceremony must still exist, shrined away from the eyes of the masses. Without a doubt, they exist here today at this very moment in Hinomizawa, else I'm nearly certain where they've been enshrined. What was once locked steadfast has, for some reason, changed this year to a cheap-looking padlock. He may be able to do something about such a lock. However, it's not far from the assembly hall, nor is it even far from the presence of people. However, I will not give up. The night when it becomes a blind spot to e every villager in Hinomizawa is coming soon. Soon it will be Watanagashi. Takano? Takano, no! It's locked for a reason! Let it stay locked! <laughs> Rabble, rabble, rabble. Hey, are you worn out already? Tomorrow's the real thing. We're going to be partying until morning. Until the very end of it all. Got it? Got it. I'll give it to everything I've got. <laughs> all right. Youth is the greatest. Good work, everyone. Tomorrow's wealth and Nagashi at last. Let's get some shut-eye and save our energy for tomorrow night. Tomorrow was finally Wata Nagashi. Festivals are split into two groups. Those who enjoy them and those who support them. The former only need prepare their minds. But the latter needs not only that, but also painstakingly crafted plans and preliminary arrangements. While the general majority attending goes after goes about enjoying the festival without a care in the world, we'll be strained the whole way through. Why? You sure as hell know why? Because the beer after everything's over is the best damn beer I'll ever have! <laughs> Times like these, it's best to have an energetic fit, people. It won't be worth it if you don't do your best until the, until the end, enjoying it the whole way. Oh, he's here! Oshisan came in. Everyone hurried to stand up. Hello, everyone! Excellent words out there. Ah, you can you can be at ease. Thank you, sir! Not even my seniors, who usually talk big about themselves, can hold a candle to Oshisan. We all bow as if we're the ones being cheered squads of old. Kurado Oshi. A detective just waiting to retire. One who doesn't pay too much to the rules and regulations and doesn't do too much in the way of real work. He looks like a rotten old man with a penchant for dirty jokes. My seniors, though, tell me that he was a real fighter in his younger days. Then he may or may not be quite a heroic legend trailing behind him. Anyway, he surely has much more dignity and pres presence in the room than the section chief who came in with him. Everyone, I really, wa really want to thank you for your hard work at the preparations for the festival tomorrow. Everyone present, sta present stands upright and lends their ears to the chief's directions. We're on high the alert for any thrill-seeking criminals expecting another incident like last year. I need all of you to focus your energy as much as possible on your mission to prevent any crimes this year. Yes, sir! Of course, it would be best if nothing happened. However, everyone, please assume that an incident will, in fact, occur. Prevention is number one, but it probably won't be enough. This year, too, someone will die and someone will disappear. There's really no doubt about it. <laughs> everyone apart from the second chief smiled painfully. Oh, she's son, that won't do. We need to be more serious about this. The important part isn't to get past the night on the festival. It's to be able to be quickly and swiftly and aggressively pursue whatever does happen tomorrow night. I won't tolerate anything less than your best. Clench those cheeks! We're going to rip all the skin off the ghosts of Otoshino Sama's curse! Yeah! That's kind of a morbid way to look at it. It's just like, yeah, no, the curse is going to happen no matter what we do. And, like, we're all fucked. It's like, wow, Jesus Christ. All right, I'm going to call it a night. It's for two hours, and that's a usually good stopping point. So you guys all have a good night. May the cicadas send you to sleep.